This video is a quick introduction to angular signals. We are going to write our first signal and we're going to talk about the benefits of signals. The content in this video is extracted from the Modern Angular with Signals course, which is a brand new course that I'm recording, where I'm showing how to build Angular applications with signals and also with minimal RxJS. You can see here the table of contents in the Angular University. The first 40 minutes are available. So the course is in pre-launch mode. You can already get it if you want. You can watch the first 40 minutes and then I'm going to be releasing new lessons weekly until the course is completed. I'm also going to be posting here on YouTube sample videos such as this one. In this particular video, the reminder of the content is going to be writing your first Angular signal and why Angular signals main benefits. Let me know in the comment section below if you enjoy this type of content where I extract content directly from my courses and I put it here on YouTube when compared to the other content that I have here on the channel. The link to the course is going to be in the description. So without further ado, let's get started learning Angular signals. Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what is an Angular signal. And we're going to write our first signal. We're going to talk about how signals are plugged in into Angular change detection and what are the main advantages of signals. So what is a signal? A signal is a new reactive primitive that allows you to build Angular applications in reactive style. You can think of it as a value that evolves over time. Let me quickly show you a signal. First, we're going to head over to a component here in our sample application. Let's just use for the sake of an example, the home component here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to quickly add here a very simple feature. I'm going to do it without signals first, and then I'm going to switch it to using a signal and I'm going to explain the differences and the advantages of signals. Let's then here quickly implement a very simple feature, which is going to be the incrementing of a counter. We are going to do that first without signals, then with signals, and we're going to compare the differences. So here there will be this increment button. And whenever we click on it, we're going to call an increment component method. All right. So we are calling this increment. Now let's switch over here to our component. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to declare a plain member variable counter. I'm going to initialize it to zero. And here I'm going to implement here the increment method. And I'm just going to increment the variable. Let's go ahead and let's display here the counter on the screen. I'm going to access here the variable counter. And now let's see this in action. As I click here, the counter is getting incremented as expected. Now, this is such a simple example that doesn't use signals yet. And already it's already kind of almost magic, because if you think about this for a second, how does Angular even know that we have mutated this counter? How does Angular know that it has to update the view? It's kind of magic, right? No other framework does this. And this is actually the initial way uh, as Angular was envisioned to be used by its creators. It supports plain member variables such as objects, numbers, arrays, etc. You can use them as the member variables of your components. You can mutate them directly as much as you want. And Angular is going to figure out what needs to be updated in the DOM. It just works. Now, you don't need to turn this into an observable, etc. That is just one particular way of doing Angular applications. The initial way that the creators envisioned Angular to be used is this way where we are using plain member variables and then Angular just does its magic and detects what has changed and it knows exactly what needs to be updated in the DOM. Now, how does this magic all work? Angular is using a library called zone.js that is actually patching all the DOM APIs, such as, for example, set timeout, Ajax requests, etc. And Angular is detecting that those APIs are getting triggered. And in response to that, it's uh, checking here the DOM and it's detecting what data has changed. And Angular will actually go through the whole component tree and compare the values 
on every single template expression, such as this one, where we are accessing the counter variable, Angular is going to compare the value of this expression before an event and after an event. So in our case, before a click and after a click. And if there is a difference in one of the values of the template expressions of this component, Angular is going to mark this home component as dirty and it will know that it needs to be updated in the next change detection cycle. So this is how Angular default change detection works under the hood. And now we are going to implement the same exact example, but this time around using a signal and we're going to compare the two versions. So let's switch here to our component. This counter here is a number. Let's turn this into a signal of number. We need to provide an initial value to the signal. Signals must always have a value. So if there is no initial value, you can provide null if you don't know the value, but a signal in general always needs to have an initial value. And here our counter is being initialized to zero. Now, if you check here the type here of this variable, we can see that this is a writable signal of number. So this is no longer a plain number. Instead, this is a container that wraps a number. And if you try to access this counter here, in our template like this, you're going to see that this is not a number. This is actually printing out here some sort of an object. This is not what we want. If you want to get here the value of the signal, you need to invoke the signal using the round parenthesis notation. And this time around, you get here the value zero. Of course, if you change here the initial value and you switch it to 10, you're going to get here 10, etc. So now the question is, this is a container for a value. Now, how do we change the value? You can change the value in the following way. I'm going to access the counter and I'm just going to change it using the set API. So let me grab the current value here of the signal with this dot counter and I'm going to increment it with one. And I'm going to show you another way of updating the counter in a later lesson. Right now, I just want to explain how signals work. So we have refreshed here our application and this time around, if you click here on increment, everything is working correctly again as expected, but this time around our example has been implemented using signals. Our data in our component is no longer a plain member variable. Instead, we are wrapping all our data in signals. So we have here our first signal based Angular component. It's a very simple example. As you can see, this is not that different from using plain member variables. We have to define our member variables as being wrapped here in this signal container. Instead of having to mutate them directly, we need to call set. Okay, that's a small difference, but it's not that big of a deal. This is not a complex concept. And here in the template, instead of accessing our data directly, we have to call it here with round parentheses. Again, a relatively small detail that we need to pay attention. So my first comment on this signal-based approach is that it's not that different from using plain member variables. It's a very simple, easy to use and intuitive programming model. There are no advanced concepts at play here like RxJS. It's all very beginner friendly. You can read a component written with signals very easily. Now, the question is, why would we even want to use signals in the first place? Even though that they are easy to use and understand, what are the advantages, what are the benefits of signals? That's what I'm going to talk about in our next lesson. So now we know what a signal looks like. And with that out of the way, let's now talk about why would we even want to use signals in the first place? That's the right question to ask, right? The main advantage of signals is that it gives Angular a way of knowing exactly when the data in a given component is being modified. So if we write our applications in a way where all the data that arrives here at the template is wrapped in a signal, then if Angular wants to know when the UI needs to be updated, all that Angular has to do is to keep track of all the signals in the application. And by sort of subscribing to the signal, by getting notified when a new value of the signal changes, Angular could potentially know 
exactly what components in the component tree should be marked as dirty and updated. In the case of our home component, Angular can tell by plugging into the counter signal when the signal value changes. So Angular knows exactly when the home component needs to be updated. In order for this to work, we need two things. We need to give Angular the guarantee that all our data is wrapped in signals. So we should not use plain member variables anymore. We should wrap everything carefully in signals. The second thing that we need to do is to tell Angular that this is a signal-based component, meaning that it has all its data wrapped in signals, so Angular can be 100% sure that we are not going to modify the data in any other way other than via signals. So in that particular situation, you can open here your component decorator and you're going to have here available a flag called signals true. And when you set this here at the level of the component, this is now going to become a signal based component. Now notice the following. I would expect in the future for Angular to have a way to turn on signals everywhere in the application so that you don't have to turn it on component per component. And the same here for the standalone true flag. There will be for sure a way to turn this on globally so that you don't have to add this flag in every single component of your application. As we can see, one of the main advantages of signals is that they can be used by Angular to replace the default change detection mechanism. So by paying a small programmatic price of wrapping our data in signals and calling set to modify their values, Angular can bring us signal-based change detection. Signal-based change detection brings us a performance level that is comparable to on-push, but with a much simpler and easier to understand programming model. Another big advantage of signals is that it allows us to write our Angular applications in a more declarative and reactive way. And I'm going to get into all of that in detail in future lessons. Right now, in this specific lesson, I just want to drive home the point that signals are a very powerful and easy way for Angular to do change detection. We don't need to use Zone.js anymore if we are writing our Angular application using signals. Angular no longer has to scan the whole component tree looking for differences in template expressions before and after an event. All of that is not necessary anymore. We no longer have to have expression has changed after it was checked errors in Angular and other similar change detection related errors. So we are not going to run into those at development time. So these in a nutshell are the advantages of using signals in Angular. You have an improved change detection mechanism with less errors at development time with a performance comparable to on push, you have a simplified programming model very close to uh, changing plain member variables like in default Angular change detection. And also, most of all, Signals allows you to build your applications in a more declarative and reactive style. And I'm going to demonstrate that in upcoming lessons. So I hope that this summarizes some of the key benefits of using signals in Angular. Let's then continue our initial section by further exploring the major concepts of signals, including computed signals and effects. I hope you enjoyed these two sample lessons of the Modern Angular with Signals course. Please let me know in the comment section, do you like this type of content, direct extracts from my courses with just an intro, or you prefer content made specifically for YouTube covering a well-defined topic. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be publishing here a few more sample lessons in case that you guys like them. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I will see you next time. Cheers everyone!